This happened when I was twelve. I was home alone for one night, since my parents were in town with friends. I was in my room around 4.30 a.m. when I was woken up to the sound of knocking coming from the front door. I wasn't going to answer it. But when I looked out the peephole, there wasn't anyone there, shockingly. Then, about ten minutes later, the knocking happened again. I put on my shoes and sweatshirt, just in case I needed to get out of the house through the back door. I looked at the peephole again, and I saw a guy who looked to be in his early fifties standing about a yard away. But I didn't get a good view of his face, so I couldn't tell who he was. I even saw a knife tucked into his jeans. Then, he took four steps toward my house. I freaked out, so I went out the back door as quietly as possible. Don't get me wrong when I say this, but before leaving the house, I didn't put on any pants. Yeah, I know it's weird, right? But I didn't want to waste any time. Thankfully, I was still wearing my tidy whiteies. Anyway, when I got outside through the back door, I got to the sidewalk and ran for what felt like miles. I was running for about two blocks, and then I walked for about five more blocks until I finally found a police car. The officer in the car rolled down the passenger window and asked me, Hey kid, are you okay? Why aren't you wearing any pants? I told him there was a guy at the front door of my house with a knife, and I left to go get help. I told him I didn't have any pants on because I didn't want to waste time, and that I was scared for my life. He told me it'll be okay, and then he told me to get into his car so he could drive me home, and then take a look at the situation. I got in his car, and he drove me. When we got to the house, the officer told me to stay in the car until he got the guy just for my safety. After about three minutes, he came out of my house with the guy in handcuffs. I got out of the car and went to see who the guy was that tried to get into my house. I was absolutely shocked when I saw who it was. It was my mom's ex-boyfriend. Apparently, he wanted to come to the house in the middle of the night to slit her throat to get revenge on her for dumping him. But when he saw she wasn't home, he was angry. And I kid you not, that guy with the knife actually told me that I was his other target if she wasn't there. Tar he then said to me, You're really lucky you got out of the house in time to get the police. Otherwise, you would have been dead. The officer put the guy in his car, and he came back to me. I told him that the guy is my mom's ex-boyfriend. They said that he'd call my parents to come over and that he'd tell them about it. I gave him my mom's number. He called her, and then they said they were on their way. About five minutes later, my parents came home, and the officer told them what happened. Afterwards, I told my parents everything else. They were glad I wasn't hurt, but also confused about why I left the house while I was still in my underwear. I just told them I was scared for my life and didn't want to waste time. They understood. We thanked the officer and then he left, and that guy with the knife got taken away. I went in the house with my parents, sat down in the living room, and explained to them a second time the entire story. They were just glad I wasn't hurt or worse. I'm now 23, and I have my own place. I always make sure my place is locked before leaving for any reason, or even going to bed. We haven't heard from my mom's ex-boyfriend since, and we hope it stays that way. This all went down in the summer of my eighth grade year. I was on my way to finally becoming a high schooler, and it was legit one of the best summers of my life. I had two and a half months of no school until I was officially in high school. I used my time up mostly by playing video games, sleeping, or playing basketball with my friends. I was actually home alone for a whole entire week, and my parents thought I could hold down the fort. They trusted me, as I was a relatively good kid. Besides, I had a cell phone, so if anything were to go wrong, I would have a way of calling someone for help. My dad also gave me access to one of his credit cards in case I were to get hungry and didn't want to eat what we had at the house. Really, I was stoked about having the house to myself. I've had people tell me that it was pretty messed up of my family to leave me alone for that amount of time, especially considering I was barely 14 years old. I don't really think so, though. They didn't expect anything bad to happen, and neither did I. It was a rare occasion as well that they were gone for so long. 
This wasn't something they did often. As a matter of fact, I still live with my parents now, and I'm 19 years old. Ever since that day everything went down, I haven't been home alone for more than 24 hours. At the time, it was a Friday night around 11 p.m. when I heard my phone go off. I received a text message from an unknown number, and all it said was, Hey! I messaged them back and asked who they were, and they immediately became passive-aggressive and upset with me for not knowing who it was. I apologized, thinking it was someone I was close with. I had just gotten a new phone a few months prior and lost all my contacts, so I explained that to them, but they still seemed pretty upset. They started harassing me, and I ended up thinking that they were just pranking me. So I turned my phone on silent and continued playing my PlayStation. I'm not sure how long after, probably around ten minutes or so, I heard a knock on my bedroom window. I thought I was just hearing things at first, but I decided to check and see who was out there just in case. I moved my blinds over to the side and looked out the window, but I didn't see anyone. I wasn't convinced, though. I knew I heard a knock, and I was starting to become very paranoid. I looked through some of the windows throughout my house to see if I could spot anyone, but again, there was nobody. I can't deny the eeriness, though. It felt like something was about to happen, something really, really bad. I took my phone out to call my mum, and I had a bunch of notifications from that person who was texting me earlier. The most recent message said, I'm here. I couldn't believe what I was reading, and it made my nightmares and everything I was feeling come to life. I went to call my mum, and very quickly, I realized my phone wasn't picking up any service, which was extremely unusual. I have really good cell phone connection, as does my whole family, especially at home. Like, we never run into issues with that. It was at this point I was literally terrified, and I had no clue what to do. I had no way of contacting anyone, and I knew I was absolutely screwed. I wanted to message that person back and tell them to leave me alone, but obviously I couldn't, considering I had no service. If you're wondering why I didn't use my Wi-Fi to send an iMessage, it's because the person who texted me wasn't on an iOS device. I was pacing back and forth in my living room when all of a sudden, I heard some noises coming from outside. I went in the direction of which I heard the noise, toward the back patio, and I listened. Someone was screaming for help at the top of their lungs over and over. My heart began thumping out of my chest, and my initial reaction was that it was a setup because of the kind of person I am. Considering I took boxing classes for years and knew how to fight, I wanted to stick up for myself and for whoever was potentially being hurt. I'm not going to lie, I really wanted to beat the crap out of whoever was harassing me. Plus, I knew if I didn't do something now, something bad was likely to happen anyway. So, I did the unthinkable. I walked outside to my back patio, and it was silent. The only thing I could hear was the crickets chirping. I waited for a second until I yelled, Hey, who's there? Hey, don't mess with me, man. You don't want to start something you can't finish, I said. Almost right after that, there was an extremely bright light flashing at me from afar. Our hoose sits on quite a bit of land, and we have a huge backyard with tons and tons of trees. Whoever it was was pointing the light at me, clearly trying to piss me off. The light then began moving all around towards my direction at the house for a minute, then it turned off within an instant. The screaming picked back up again. It was the same voice pleading for help. I knew it was now or never. I ran back inside and into the garage, grabbed my old baseball bat as a weapon, and made my way back outside towards the woods, heading directly where I first saw the flashlight. My heart was fluttering at this point, as I wasn't sure what to expect. As I got closer and closer, my anxiety about doubled. I couldn't believe that I was in this situation, and I had a sudden realization that what I was doing was pretty stupid. Right when I was about to turn around to go back inside, somebody from the woods that I couldn't see said something to me. Hey, over here, man. It was so dark that I couldn't see him or anything, barely for that matter. All I could see were the dark silhouettes of all the trees around me. Who's there? I asked. That was when the voice ahead of me whispered and told me to quiet down. He asked me to help him and said he was tied up to a tree and that someone had kidnapped him. 
Obviously, this alarmed me to the extreme. However, despite me thinking it was possibly a setup, I went with my gut feeling of helping this guy. Hey, it's going to be okay, man. Just calm down. I'm going to call the police for you. Just hang tight, I said. That's when he started yelling at me, basically, No, help me right now. You don't understand. He's going to come back in a few minutes and kill me, he said. I was in a really bad situation, as I just wanted to do the right thing. Okay, I'm coming. Where are you? I asked. I'm just right ahead. Just keep walking straight. I can already see you, he said. My heart was beating at an incomprehensible rate now, even much so that I'm surprised he didn't pass out. All the things that were crossing my mind set me into a panic, and I was fully into the woods at this point. I looked ahead after walking for maybe twenty or thirty seconds, and I saw a dark shadow that looked like a person, maybe about thirty feet away. Hey man, is that you? I asked, but he didn't reply. I sat in silence for a moment while I tried to piece together what the hell was happening. If that was him, or even if it wasn't him, I was in some deep because the man I was looking at definitely wasn't tied up to a tree. He was standing up straight and very much alive. Only a moment worse of time, the person started running at me. It was at that exact moment I started backing up slowly. I eventually snapped out of it and I booked it all the way to my house. Somehow, I made it inside before he caught up to me, shut and locked the sliding glass door behind me, and he was standing right there pulling on the door, trying to get it open. He was a very tall but slender-looking man, with a wolf mask on and one big-ass hammer. I barely hesitated, and I ran to my room. I know what you're thinking right now, too. Why didn't I just defend myself with the bat? Well, originally, that was my plan. But when it happened, I don't know. I was absolutely terrified, and you would be, too, if you were in that same situation. I was pacing back and forth in my living room, trying my luck with my phone again, but still, I had no service. I started having some sort of manic episode, and I began screaming and punching my couch. I was extremely angry, and I was sick of being the victim. I almost ran out there and beat him myself, but I chose a different approach. I waited patiently, and sure enough, after only a minute, he was knocking on my front door. I ran over to the door and told him, Come on in, man. See what happens if you step even a single foot in my house. You won't be walking out if you do, that's for sure. He then started laughing. I just kept quiet, and I went back to my room. The knocking grew louder and louder, and eventually he started screaming. I had no idea what he was saying, but I think he was mocking me. A few minutes went by of this, and that's when I heard my living room window shatter. I got myself ready and I hid behind my open bedroom door just waiting for him to walk in. The footsteps got closer and closer as he walked into a few different rooms. Now he was heading to mine. I gripped the bat tighter and said a little prayer. He walked in, and I was able to hit him in the heat with the bat, and he fell straight to the ground. I hit him a few times while he was down as well, to make sure he wasn't getting back up any time soon. And I ran. I ran down the road about five or six miles to my friend's house. When I finally got them to answer the door, I briefly explained what happened, and they let me use their phone to call the police. A few police officers were sent to my house, and a few officers to my friend's house as well. I then called my parents, and they rushed home. They were over two hours away though, so it was going to be a while before they made it back. I told the police exactly what happened, and it turned out I had killed him. I didn't know if he was dead or not until the police officer told me. I was worried I was going to be in trouble, even though I didn't do anything illegal. It was self-defense. The police took me in for questioning, and since I was a minor at the time, they had to bring my parents in as well. Yes, I killed a man as a teenager, and everything about it has completely changed my life. I've been numb. I've been scared, and I've been anxious. I can't tell you how many nightmares I've had about this whole thing. It's all over now, and this was years ago. Sometimes it feels like it only happened yesterday.
and I relived the whole thing, all the blood, the screaming, and more importantly, my innocence. Four years ago, I lived in a very small one-bedroom house with one of my best friends. We couldn't afford anything bigger, so that's why we settled with a one-bedroom. I slept on the futon in the living room, and my friend slept in the actual bedroom. This happened in fall, when it was just starting to get cold. My friend had taken a few days to go visit his sister a few hours away, so I was the only one at the house. This was over the weekend, too so I got to spend both entire days enjoying having the space to myself. It's not that I didn't like having him around, but it was just nice to not be crammed together in a tiny house for once. Anyway, on Sunday night, I went out to pick up some groceries and got home around 7 Chu. I had work the next day, but given the unusual circumstances, I decided to stay up a little later and watch a movie. I stayed there on the couch for at least an hour, almost finishing the movie when there was a quiet thump from down the hallway. I looked over, not seeing anything and figuring it was just the house, so I kept on with the movie. For the next 30 minutes, there were no other sounds, so the thump was completely insignificant and had fully left my mind. Once the movie was over, I filled up my water bottle and went back to the futon, pulling it out into a bed and laying down. I was on my phone for a while, but I fell asleep sometime around 11. When I woke up, my eyes felt really heavy, and my vision was blurry. I wasn't sure why I'd woken up, but I knew it was still late into the night. I rubbed my eyes a bit and looked over at the clock when a very faint sound came from the other side of the house, wood, creaking like someone carefully walking across the floorboards. My eyes widened, and I snapped fully awake. My heart rate started rising as I got off the futon and walked over to the hallway. The creaking had stopped but looking down the hallway, I got this terrifying feeling. I walked down until I reached the door to my friend's bedroom. Then I leaned against it and listened. It was quiet, not even a sound coming from the house. I slowly twisted the door handle and pushed it open a few inches, moving my eyes across the room as I continued to open the door wider. It looked empty, but I quickly noticed how messy the room was. There were things scattered around all over the floor and bed. Confused, I took a step into the room and flicked on the light. Instantly, from the corner of my eye, I saw a figure move away from the gap between the closet door. I jumped out of the room and slammed the door shut, then ran to get my phone, as I heard the closet door opening and footsteps going into the hallway. Once I had my phone, I ran to the back door, seeing a large man coming down the hallway toward me. I got out and went through the backyard, but the man didn't follow. A minute later... I got to where I felt safe and called the police. They searched the house, but ultimately found nothing useful in figuring out who the man was or why he was there. They also aren't entirely sure how he got into the house, but it's likely he broke in while I was away getting groceries. That night, my friend was just as terrified as I was once I told him everything, and we eventually moved out of the house, hopefully to never encounter that man again.